So thank you very much for this very clear and uh, uh, you know very important. You know this, po this historical perspective is really amazing in this respect. Uh, I'm sure. I mean, I myself a couple of thousand of questions that I will keep for me because I, I care for your dinner. But I suppose some of you have also questions to be asked, and they so here immediately. Yes. Uh, the, I just give you this. Is it okay? If you just. Thank you. So it was a very inspiring lecture, but people at the top of the income distribution, they have much more power in deciding how to obtain their income in the sense like a wage or a capital gain. Would your picture change if you would add not only income taxation, but also other kind of taxation, like capital gain taxation or a capital taxation? Should we take a few and then you answer later on? Or you prefer each? Maybe one each, to the, that way we okay. can... Uh, control of the time. Uh, okay, easy. so you want to answer yeah. this one. So yes. the, the, this, is, uh, the, the, this is a good question. So I, I skipped uh, my slides uh, on, uh, on capital gains. So, you, so what, what is true is that uh, you have to be careful that the trend, you know, I've documented here, is it really a real effect that is the rich getting much richer here you know than they were here or is it just a symptom of tax avoidance the rich here perhaps being very rich but just avoiding a lot uh, uh, a lot their taxes and precisely I use here capital gains because the the, the curve the black curve I was showing you was including uh, capital gains that were taxed at a relatively low level uh, here and so you can see that this is probably a real effect because even when you include capital gains, uh, it's still much lower here than there. You know, in, in other words, in this period, if the rich had been really super rich, they should have had huge capital gains because the capital gains were relatively uh, tax favored. So now, to, to tax the rich efficiently, you want relative neutrality. Uh, of taxation, that is, you want to prevent the rich from reporting their income in ways that are dramatically uh, tax favored. So that's why, uh, in the case of the US, it doesn't make sense to increase you know, this tax rate a lot if you don't do anything for capital gains uh, at the same time. So the reason why here it could work is because we were not in a globalized world, and therefore, even though capital gains were taxed at a low rate, there was behind a very solid corporate income tax that could essentially, you know, it was like an extra tax on capital income, so there was no easy way to evade income. Now, with a globalized economy, with a low capital gains tax rate and a corporate income tax that is easy to, uh, to avoid through multinational operations, that's become a, a very big issue. Hello, I, I have just a question on the data, actually a question and a comment. Uh, the data, I mean, in, in terms of comparison, uh, of a comparison between different countries, because the way in which you measure, pers if I understand well, most of this data comes from personal income tax declaration, right? But the way in which you define personal income in the different countries is different. For example, in Italy, most of the cap uh, income from capital is not declared in the in the income declaration, so it's out, it's taxed out. It's not only capital gains, which in many cases are out in many other countries, but also you know, the return from investment in bonds and things like that. So, the, so the, my first question is about the comparability. The second about your point about rent seeking is of course, I mean, nothing against increasing top tax, top marginal tax, but uh, I might even consider if there are other ways to try to reduce this kind of uh, advantage for uh, uh, the, the top income people. So, for example, regulation. No? You, you can think that a lot, a number of this money comes from a stock option or this kind of behavior. So, you might try to think that uh, an alternative to taxes could be some form of regulation. So, in a sense, you have, if you want to make the point of increasing the taxes, you also have to make the point to say that this is the best alternative that we have. Yes. Okay. So th those are very good questions. So, on the comparison, uh, you're right. That is, we work with the income tax data, and the income tax data is not exactly comparable across countries because indeed, you know, some countries uh, will exclude from the base 
some forms, often, you know, capital uh, income. So that's why in the U.S. it's very important, you know, we, we look at income including capital gains and not including capital gains. It gives you overall the same picture, but it's true. Uh, the, the, the magnitude of the effect is, 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 is a little bit larger when you look at income including capital gains. In the end, the good answer is that we should do better and try to impute capital income uh, in countries that are deficient in terms because the, the tax system uh, doesn't capture them very well. So that's why actually Thomas Piketty has, wants to launch what he is going to call uh, the, the World uh, Wealth uh, Database because looking at wealth you can uh, somehow approximate, you know, or, or get a better sense of capital income. And I, I should summarize, you know, his work. As I think it's going to be very important, especially in Europe. Wealth to income ratios at the aggregate level have increased dramatically in countries like Italy, France, Spain, which, and wealth is very concentrated in all countries by nature, even though it doesn't show here, perhaps in part because capital income is not fully reflected, there is an increase in concentration, but if you want, of wealth, and that is likely to play a, a, a big role, I think, when it becomes more apparent in the, in the fiscal debate. On the question of regulation, I agree that regulation is very important. The one that has been studied the most is financial regulation. There is very interesting work by Thomas uh, Philippon, who has shown, indeed, a very strong relationship between share of profits going to finance and the pay of finance workers relative to average and regulation over time in the US and the two uh, shapes correlate, the two curves correlate uh, very well. So in the case of finance sector regulations, we know they are effective. I mean, we have the US example, again, the great uh, recession and the New Deal with a strong financial regulation and then that is uh, undone in the 70s and the 1980s, that plays a big role. In contrast on regulation of executive pay, that has been much less successful in large part because it's not, perhaps because it's not done in a smart way. So for example, the US has said we are banning uh, compensation above $1 million if it's not related to performance in the sense that it was no longer deductible for corporate income tax purposes. And what that created was an explosion in bonuses and stock options, which are performance pay related. So, you know, it's, a, it's the typical example of a, of, of a reform that has unintended uh, consequences. consequences. It's, 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 it's a hard problem. So far, I haven't seen any very smart regulation on uh, executive compensation. Related to this, I take this opportunity to make another small commercial for the Fondazione. There is a, a work done by Murphy uh, for the Fondazione on CO pay, uh, and also last uh, Rodolfo de Benedetti lecture was on, uh, on, on executive compensation. And they did find actually that there was a lot of, uh, um, in, uh, it was symmetric, you know, the reaction also, and uh, the, 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 the performance related pay was playing symmetrically, which is one of the major concerns, that it is not symmetric. So, but this is consistent with more or less what you are saying, because you have this very high volatility of, of, of capital income. Um, yes, so in please. looking at your uh, distribution of uh, top incomes, uh, higher volatility, one may guess that uh, both of the higher volatility and the down, downfall in, during the recessions may be related to the higher percentage of uh, their wealth in terms of uh, variable capital or uh, equity, in other words, uh, because stock exchange and uh, stock uh, options and so on. Do, ha do your data allow you to check whether this uh, assumption may be supported by data concerning the composition of wealth between uh, fixed income, real estate, and uh, equity? Yes, so this is a good question. Actually, there have been uh, studies, no, notably by Jonathan Parker, who has documented instead the much stronger volatility of, um, of top incomes in the recent period relative you know, to, to, to that period. So, you, you, unfortunately, we don't have data to do it, uh, to do it very well. So we can look at pieces, you know, stock options, 
definitely play a role, you know, in, especially in this one uh, here, because that's precisely in the late 90s when stock options uh, become uh, more important. Uh, capital gains, it's, it's, it's possible that their wealth is more invested uh, in, in, the, in the stock market, but we don't have, or at least in the publicly traded stock market, that, uh, 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 that is more uh, uh, cyclical. So more than a question, it's a, a comment. I'm sympathetic with your conclusion number two, um, increase the tax rate to reduce uh, top income. But uh, all the argument you made, it seems to me this is affected by an omitted variable problem. This is uh, the social, cultural acceptance of uh, inequality. And uh, this is the way in which I read your conclusion number four, uh, that is uh, uh, convince people that uh, uh, increasing the share of top income is detrimental to the others. So um, if I would choose, I had to choose a policy instrument, I wouldn't choose between tax rate or uh, uh, regulation, but rather on, on culture. Okay, so, so this is also a very important question, and I think the cultural factor explains why uh, in some countries, even though they've cut top tax rates, they haven't seen as large an increase in income concentration. Japan uh, is an example that cuts top tax rates quite a bit, and yet it doesn't, uh, doesn't see uh, nearly as much as an increase. You see, they cut by 30 points, and they have only that small increase. So, so, so what I think is true is that social norms can keep top incomes at moderate uh, levels, but if you want to be sure, you have to do uh, the taxes. Because in that chart here, I see no countries which hasn't touched the, the taxes, you know, that has seen a surge in top incomes. Um, okay, so, and social norms is also something that is very difficult. What, what is the policy uh, that is going uh, to change uh, uh, to change social norms. Very good. I think uh, it has been a long uh, uh, day and uh, I think uh, it was, we had a very nice discussion here. I'm sure there are many other things that we would like to ask, but uh, uh, I think we have to, to close here. And uh, so thank you very much, Manuel, for your very bright lecture and I, I hope that we will also inspire more people to work on the top income database which is indeed uh, extremely interesting and do thank more you. work in this area. So thank you. Thank you.